Hey everybody, it's Jackie and Samantha. Um, I'm just giving you a four year update on Samantha's pull injury on her tail. Um, it happened on Ash Wednesday in the end of February 2016. And this Ash Wednesday was her four year anniversary. And so I just want to, if you have a cat with a tail pull injury, which is specifically, in her case, her tail is broken. You can see how it hangs limp. Um, I, she was in front of my car, I put it in gear, rolled forward, and I heard her scream, so I backed up. And what happens when a cat gets its tail caught in a door, whenever you release the door or whatever is holding it, the cat will take off. And when the cat takes off running, the tail pull injury occurs when the tail is pulled hard and there are all the nerves right here are in the base of the tail and that controls their feeling for movement of the tail and urination and and pee uh tiger's bothering her so she's a little but anyways um that is where the feeling is and so when the nerves are pulled or severed that results in a tail pull injury so in samantha's case because i heard her and i just started to roll i didn't roll completely over the tail there is a dent in one side of the tail, but it's not all the way across. And luckily my white cat chased her so I could see where she went when she ran off because I thought she was gonna die. But she ran behind the bushes, so I got her out and brought her in the house. And I noticed that she seemed to be in one piece except for her tail was broken. So, um, I did not amputate the tail because the tail was still warm. And if the tail is still warm, there's hope because it's getting blood flow. So, I took her to the vet because she was not going, she was going in the litter box, but nothing was coming out. So, although she was used to going in the box and she would dig around, her bladder was filling up but would not come out. So anyways, long story short, she's been incontinent. And how I deal with her incontinence is I went to the thrift store and bought 50 towels for a dollar, you know, ones with paint stains or whatever, um, or bleach stains. Um, and I line her bed and she sleeps on her towel or I put the towel wherever she is and so um, she didn't really dribble except for at night when she lost consciousness whenever she'd fall asleep she would dribble so but during the day when she was awake she did not let her bladder go so um, but anyways the reason I'm doing this four-year update is because five times this week she has gone into the cat box and purposely expressed her bladder on her own. So um, in four years now, we've had a little miracle. Um, she's gone into the box before to poop because um, she could feel when she had to poop. Uh, sometimes it'd be in the box, I'm half out of the box, sometimes she wouldn't make it to the box, but I knew she was having feeling when she had to go. So I was hopeful over time Nerves, like any kind, of, any kind of nerves, take a long, long time to regenerate. And I, what I had heard from veterinarians or what I could online research is that if the cat did not regain con continence in 30 days, it probably wasn't going to ever regain continence. And some veterinarian suggestion was to amputate the tail so the tail that didn't have any feeling wouldn't get caught in anything and then the further injured 
the cat as it tried to get unstuck if it got caught in something. So, you know, I didn't know what to do because Samantha is indoor-outdoor. And I thought, well, I don't want to amputate her tail because it's warm. And then I read about that as well, and that causes its own problems. They have, like, ghost tail syndrome or um, it's itch. Anyways, read about that. It, it has amputating the tail. Again, you're near the nerves and you're severing. And so I just thought, you know, I hit the cat. It's my fault. I'm not going to... The other thing was to euthanize. I'm not... She's... Within a week, she was running around, dragging her tail, and, you know, although she had the incontinence, she she was up and around, and uh, so I didn't want to put the cat down. It wasn't the cat's fault, you know, and I think that would be very selfish to do so for the inconvenience, uh, you know, when there's a chance of recovery if you love your animal. I mean, so much is disposable these days, whether it's relationships or animals or whatever. Okay, so it's been four years, and this week, five times, uh, the first time, I, I just, um, I noticed she was in the box, and she was sitting normally, uh, the way she doesn't normally she looked like she was trying to squeeze her sides and express her bladder so I was like oh my gosh she's having some feeling that she has to pee this is wonderful and um, she did she uh, I heard her uh, I guess she really had to go but I heard her and then um, there was no other I've got four cats so you know it's kind of hard to know who's peeing <laughs> or pooping for that matter so I always tried whenever I see her I always try to see and you know that particular I just changed the cat box when she was in it and the other cats were outside she was the only one that was in the house so I knew it was her and I heard her and I saw her and uh, excuse the camera shaking tiger just took off but anyway so I knew it was her who peed and I was just like so proud of her you know after four years she is finally getting some nerve feeling back there. And um, now she's taken off too. But anyways, her tail hasn't got caught in anything and she's doing good. And um, so then the next night I got home from work and I, uh, my litter box is in my uh, laundry room at where, my, where I hang my coats. And I was hanging my coat and she came in and jumped in the box again and peed and this was like two days in a row and I was like oh wow she is really getting some feeling in her bottom this is great you know because you know like people who have you know spinal injuries in a person you know you're dealing with nerves and they might you know it takes years you know to get that feeling back so anyways then um Yesterday, same thing. She was digging around in the box and, you know, sometimes I think when she was peeing in the box, it was because she was pooing anyways and some pee was leaking out. But, you know, not going poo, she specifically got in the box again and expressed her bladder. And then today, I just got home and she just did it again. She was in the box and she expressed her bladder and I am so proud of her because that is um, the fourth time this week that I have caught her peeing on her own. And I'm so proud of her because <laughs> she's been a trooper because I've had to, you know, just, uh, there she is. Say hi, man. Say hi. She's been such a good baby and um, she's a... Uh, She's doing wonderful, so for anybody who's really looking at a timeline for that, where the tail nerve hasn't been severed, you know, if it's been caught in a door and you release the door and then the, the cat pulls, and that's what pulls the nerves at the base of the tail and stretches them, or, you know, if they're severed, that's it. I mean, there goes Peanut, that's another one. Um, I've got four, Charlie's here on the floor. 
But, um, anyways, uh, there is hope, um, and it's no big deal to buy some towels and put them where the cat lays. I wash her towels once a week. You know, every morning I change her towel in her bed, throw it into the washing machine, and then, you know, it's no big deal to keep your cat and do a little bit of laundry. Um, living with incontinence is not bad. Uh, you know, if by some chance you do get, you know, a little bit of urine on the floor or whatever, just there's a million things you can clean it with. I use watered down bleach because bleach is not good for cats, but um, there's all kinds of things you can uh, use to clean uh, instead of euthanizing your pet. So anyways, my name's Jackie. This is a, a four year update. And again, tail pull injuries is the topic for cats. Here's Samantha. She's a little mad, but she has a broken tail which happened in February of 2016, and she's a little mad. Say, hey, Mantha. <laughs> you mad? Okay. But anyways, and then here's her broken tail. But she is starting to lift it a little bit, and there is some motion at the tip of her tail. Um, she moved her tip of her tail a year later in 2017. We were sitting on the couch and I was just, you know, massaging her tail a little bit where it was warm and the tail, the tip moved like this. And that was in 2017 and now here it is uh, three more years later and she's peeing in the box. And I'm beyond thrilled. So anyways, um, thank you so much for watching. And um, I hope that if you're going through this, you will consider just, uh, you know, deal with it. It's, it's not a big deal, um, okay? Um, it's not a big deal at all. All right, thanks a lot, y'all. Bye-bye.